Hey everyone, welcome back to the Krusty Krab. In today's video, we're gonna go over the box component. After all, our mission is to go over every single Matilda UI component. And the box component is probably one of the most misunderstood components out there. People don't really understand what it does, why it's needed, or when you should use it, if at all. And we're gonna go over all that in this video. And if you find value in it, make sure you leave a comment. It helps so much with the YouTube algorithm. I'm gonna try to reply to every single comment. And make sure if you wanna learn more about React and Matilda UI, you like like, subscribe and hit that notification bell because I'm going to be uploading a lot of videos. So let's jump straight into this box component. Essentially on the documentation itself you can see that it's pretty short and they even have the API documentation within the actual page. The reason for that is because there are so few props that they actually want you passing in here and there's a good reason for that although it was completely different in Matil UI v4 but we'll get into that in just a second. Let's go into code sandbox and actually import the box component and see what happens. As you can see here I have the box component wrapped around a test uh, that's just some random text and if I were to go ahead and inspect you would see all it does is it adds this div with a class MUI box root CSS zero and there's absolutely no stylings being applied here in essence the box component when used just like this is essentially just a div and that's all it is and the reason you want to use this is because this box component has the functionalities of a div that you would be able to style however it's wrapped in the MUI system properties what that means is you can go ahead and use the SX prop, which gives you access to all these system properties that are sort of shorthands and easy to use rather than using the make styles or rather than using some sort of custom uh, JSS or custom CSS um, solutions that a lot of people might use. Essentially, you want to use this box component anywhere you would normally just use a container div and you want to be able to pass in all these cool little shorthands that contain things like theme.spacing shorthands for things like paddings or margins and everything we talked about in the SX prop video which is sort of important to understand how all of this works so I'll leave a link to that in the description but nonetheless all you have to know is with the SX prop you are able to pass in anything you would be able to pass into a regular styled component for example if I wanted to make the um, let's say for example the uh, uh, the background color of uh, this I would be able to pass in the SX prop to our uh, to our box I could go ahead and target the background color prop and make it equal to red and go ahead and save that and that's sort of regular CSS you would be able to do that with a regular div if you applied it to the styles prop however the benefit here is you also have access to not only all the shorthand so for example if I were to look at BG color you can see that we could address it with background color but we can also use a shorthand um, that is material UI specific called BG color and go ahead and save that but also with all of these properties all of these system properties you can go ahead and also target specific theme values so for example I could target for example primary dot main and go ahead and save that and it would change it to material UI's primary dot main which is a blue color um, color so you can go ahead and target all these different values from your theme folder um, or your theme file which you don't have to have until you why by default imports a theme um, and you can do a lot of things with that and we will have a theme video coming up but this allows you to import a bunch of different properties from theme and use a bunch of different shorthands and that is the main difference with the box component or any material UI component that you can pass in this XS prop which is all of them but the main benefit of the box is that it replaces standard divs or spans depending on what you need it to now there are some drawbacks as well for example if you go into the MUI system uh, documentation and you look at the actual performance trade-off you can see here that the difference between rendering a thousand divs and adding it um, you know the styles through a class name versus rendering a thousand box components is roughly 270 milliseconds now you're probably not going to be in a situation where you have a thousand boxes and even if you do an, uh, another 270 milliseconds isn't going to make the biggest change but what they do recommend in a case like this and you might have a case like this for example if you are rendering a bunch of items on a list or a table you know if your table has or your list has a thousand items or maybe it's like YouTube and you have a bunch of comments and the user can sort of infinite scroll or something like reddit where it might get to obscenely large amounts of container divs that in those situations you might want to make the actual container 
um, for all of those items a box and actually make the items inside of the box that might get up to those numbers just a classic div where you pass in a class name to style it now of course um the actual use case for using these boxes saves you just a bit of time when it comes to actually programming in the sense that you're able to use the shorthands and able to target material UI theme variables better and not just color values either things like spacings and font weights um, uh, and typography variables, You'll, you're able to target all of those a lot faster. This component really is meant to be the sort of middle ground between losing only a tiny bit of performance, and I mean a really tiny bit of performance if you're only using one or two of these across a single component, and that component isn't being reused a thousand different times, the middle ground between that and being able to code in a sort of fast, efficient, and sort of clean manner where if you want to just add a couple of different stylings just to get something done, you're able to do that easily. So let's look at, for example, if I wanted to add some spacing or some margin. Well, if I wanted to add some margin, I could just go ahead and target M. Let's say, for example, I wanted to add a custom uh, a basic margin to everywhere. And then I could go ahead and just pass in a value. And you'll see, I pass in the value 3, and it looks like the margin that I got applied to each side of my text is a lot more than just three pixels on each side. The reason for that is when you just pass in a blank um, integer value, it will go ahead and multiply that by something called theme uh, dot spacing. And by default, theme dot spacing is eight pixels. So it'll multiply each side by three times eight, um, which is 24. I almost uh, didn't get that there. The reason this is useful, and take it um, from a use case I've had a lot of uh, um, uh, value out of, and I'll talk about this a lot more in the theming value video as well. A lot of the times we, when you code giant applications, you want to keep things like paddings and spacings a consistent amount so that if you ever had to change them, you could easily change one value and scale them down. For example, one application I worked on, and this was an enterprise application, um, we made the application and it turns out for, uh, the average it was an internal application and the average user in this enterprise um, would use this on a smaller monitor than we thought. And the paddings and the margins were all way too wide. Instead of having to go into 20 to 40 different components, changing all the margins and scaling it down, we were able, because we used um, the theme.spacing that came from Material UI, we were, we were able to just make the theme.spacing default from 8 pixels to 4 pixels. And that instantly halved the amount of margin and spacing everywhere that we use the theme.spacing for our layout needs. And that really is the power of Material UI. A lot of the times if you're making smaller projects, these little efficiencies might not even be worth the time that it takes to learn. But when you're actually taking this and using it on an enterprise level scale, or even a scale uh, for an application that's going to be, you know, have over five different pages with 20 different components, and it's going to be used by a lot of users, and you might have to make changes on the fly, and you want to be fast and efficient, those are the cases where Material UI really shines, and they really optimize it for the actual working software engineer that has to get things done in an effective manner that doesn't affect things um, negatively in terms of performance and in terms of coding speed. That is one of the things I love the most about Matil UI. And I guess this is, it might be something to put in my introduction to Matil UI video, maybe not the box component, but it heavily, heavily, heavily ties into just, the box component is just an amazing display of why this framework and why this Matil UI uh, library is such a well thought out library. And we're on Matil UI v5, which is the fifth iteration. And you can really tell that they took the time to listen to what its users needs and the average use case of the library and they played towards that and that is pretty much going to be it for the box component. Um, essentially, it's just a div that you can add styles through through the SX prop. It saves you a lot of time coding at just a very, very, very very slight performance hit um, for the average use case. And if you found value in this video, make sure you leave a like, make sure you leave a comment, helps so much with the YouTube algorithm, and I'll see you guys in the next video.